Hello YouTube family, this is Brother Bill and it's great to be back again to be able to share another video with the YouTube land. Saints, today I want to read um, the word of God. Now we'll be coming from Genesis, the fourth chapter. Now we'll be stopping at verse number 10. And Saints, God put on my heart how important it is for us to bring the right offering to him. And I'm not talking about uh, money. I'm not talking about anything materialistic but i mean bringing the right offering to god and i want to read this scripture these scriptures and i want to share it with you um verse number one reads in the fourth chapter adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have got to meet man from the lord and she again bare his brother abel and abel was a keeper of the sheep but cain was a tiller of the ground and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain, to his offering, he had no respect. And I want to stop right there for a minute, saints. And we see in the text in Genesis, the fourth chapter, one through five that both Cain and Abel both brought offerings unto the Lord and the Lord was pleased with Abel but he was not pleased with Cain offering and that um registered with me today God is just not pleased with any type of offering I mean he deserved the best he's the God who give us breath in our body He's the one that wake us up every single day. He um, allow our families to remain in the land of the living. He bestow his favor upon us. God always give us his very best. He always make time for his creation. He's always willing to have long suffering for his creation. So God want us to have the same type of attitude, which leads to altitude that Abel had. He gave God his very best. And saints, I'm here to um, encourage you to pray uh, these very scriptures in Genesis, the fourth chapter, one through five, that God give us the type of anointing that Abel had to trust God and give God the first, the very best offering possible. And we have this opportunity to get it right every single day, right? Because we are um, his beloved. We are the temple of the living God. And I'm here to tell you that you bring an offering unto the Lord every single day. Either your offering is uh, pleasing to God, like a sweet aroma, like sweet mirth going up to the heavens in the nostrils of your God, or your offering stinks and it is displeasing to God like Cain offering was and God had no respect. And I say that to say this, saints, that when we are just disobedient, when we are just living all types of ways, we live living evil under the sun, the works of the flesh is uh, dominating our lives. We are bringing offerings unto God. And these offerings are not pleasing to God. He will reject that offering. And, and this word is a double-edged sword, according to Hebrew, the fourth chapter, verse number 12. So as I'm speaking to you, saints, believe me, this same word that I'm delivering is also for me also, saints. So I just want you to recognize in the text in Genesis 4, chapter 1 through 5, that they both gave offerings. And God was pleased with one, and he was not pleased with the other. And I'm going to keep reading, saints. In verse number five, when unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? And saints, that is a gracious and a merciful God, in verse number six. God didn't have to say anything. He is still reaching out to Cain like he reached out to us. Anytime we miss the mark, we make a mistake, or we get ourselves in a situation that uh, separates us from God, or we get out the wheel, we get out the fold, the sheep. We tend to uh, go astray. 
God was sending an angel. He was sending a minister. He was sending a vessel to, to get us back on track, to get us back where we should be. And God is reaching out to Cain. He's speaking to him, saying, Cain, look, you you know, I'm, I'm the creator. I'm God Almighty. I'm, I'm the father of the universe. And you just didn't give me the best offering. What went wrong? How can we fix that? How can we reason? That's what the Lord is all about. You know, God is very merciful. He's very gracious. And um, Cain, at this point, this countenance has fallen. He's, he's, he's angry and he's almost dismissive of God at this point. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why art thou countenance fallen? If thou dost well, thou shalt not be accepted. If thou dost not well, sin lie at the door. And God is letting him know right here that, and this is a word for us also, saints, that when we um, are disobedient and we're giving God um, not 100% and we're giving him any, any type of offering, God is not just going to accept that. We can't mix uh, evil, hallelujah, with good, dark with light, and think we're going to be able to give it to God. God, he, he's not pleased with that. So he's letting Cain know, just like he letting the believers know, that sin is at the door. So if we don't get it together, sin will entrap us. It will ensnare us. It, it will lead us into uh, great danger and great harm. And he's saying, Cain, sin lie at the door. And unto thee shall be be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And God is telling Cain, look, you can rule over this thing. When you do things my way, and you trust me, and you just obey me and, and my word, things will be really great for you. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And saints, that's what I'm talking about. We began to entertain different conversations or uh, entertain the voice of the stranger. We would dismiss God. And the minute we begin to dismiss God, we find ourselves in the world of trouble. And this led to Cain actually committing murder. Same was able to trick him, um, overpower him, sin, overpower him. And he, and he, he slew his brother. He killed his brother Abel. And verse number nine, the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, and my, my brother's keeper. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother blood cry unto me from the ground. And I'm here to tell you saints that we have to recognize that we are God's temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying for the, everyone that is under the sound of my voice. And I hope you're praying for me also that we are God's representation in this earth realm. And God said in Romans 12, 1, that he beseech us, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I'm not here to tell you to be religious, but I'm here to tell you to be authentic, 100% with God. Have a made up mind. John 4, 24 tell us that God is the spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is just not going to allow us to play both sides of the field. I'm just here to tell you, we, we're not going to be able um, to have this Cain-like spirit and this Abel-like spirit. God wants you to have an able spirit. He wants you to be anointed. He wants you to be obedient. And you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to carry out his plan and purpose in this earth realm. And the reason we should pray daily and continue to pray and build a uh, spiritual muscle is because it equipped us and it strengthened us to be able to carry out the things that God wants us to carry out. And the, and the reason why we even going over this word, saints, God dropped it in my spirit. He said, because the more you read the word. It gave me an opportunity to speak to you like I had spoke to Cain. I would be able to remind you and to encourage you that you have power to overcome your sin. You don't have to go into temptation. The scriptures say, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. But if we're not reading the word daily and we're not meditating on the word daily, we will fall snare. We will commit uh, the same type of acts and um things that Cain did and many other characters in the Bible did, we will 
find ourselves falling into these very sins, these very snares that will lead us away from God. So if we want to tap into God's very best, God is expecting us to bring the right offering. And that starts with the right attitude. And it starts with faith. And it starts with obedience and surrendering unto God. And this is not something that you just master overnight. This is something you must put into practice according to Matthew chapter 7. You have to continue to build your house. And I'm here to tell you just don't build your house like that fool who built it upon sand. But build your house upon the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. He's the solid rock. And he told Peter, hey, the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. So I am encouraging you, YouTube land, uh, men, women of God, church of God, get into your word. Meditate on that word. Allow the word of God to challenge the way that you think so that you will have enough self-control, praise God, to be able to make the right decision and yield your members unto the Lord. And the Bible said that when you draw nigh unto God, hallelujah, that the devil will flee. And when you really tap into this type of power, he will come in one way, then he will have to flee in seven different directions. And I'm here to tell you, saints, that the bread that you're eating on today is not sufficient for tomorrow. You have to eat again, and you have to eat again, and you have to begin to develop an appetite until you are mature, you become spiritually strong, so that this life that you are living will become normal and you just will begin to walk in the supernatural. But I know that it is a challenging sense because we all are growing and we all are on different levels in the spirit. So I encourage you to read this text, um, Genesis chapter 4, 1 through 10, and see how Abel was able to give God an offering that was pleasing unto God. And God said, I am the same today. I am the same uh, yesterday. And I am the same forever. In Hebrew 13 and 8, he said, I changed not in Malachi 3 and 6. So God still wants us to have the right offering. He wants us to be able to give him something fresh, something that's, uh, that smells good, praise God. We don't want to come and we all have a, a stench and the stench that is in the nostrils of God and he, and he smelled the sin and we're reeking of sin. He wants us to be holy and clean. And he said that the words that I speak unto you, they will sanctify you, they will cleanse you, they will wash you. So I encourage you to stay in the word, meditate in the word, download the thoughts of God so that you may be transformed in the way that you think, saints, because we all have work to do. We all are a work in progress, praise God. And, but God is ready to put you on display. He's ready to uh, show his glory, his power through you. He's ready to be uh, used. He's ready for you to allow him to come in and dominate the earth. But in order for us to be able to allow God to come in and to dominate through us, we have to be receptive to his word. and We have to be obedient. And we have to be... We have to be an offering for God. So until then, YouTube man, you be blessed and you remember that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Amen.